we've been we've been writing tests for our node app for the rest api and i want to switch from testing in node to testing a component in angular and we've been using jest and now what i want to do is i want to switch to working with jasmine and the nice thing you're going to find is that switching back and forth between these different testing frameworks is it's it's not going to be hard the, the syntax is similar enough or the ideas are similar enough that uh, we're not going to have we're not going to have a lot of problems so remember what we needed with jest we had to install jest we had to set up a test runner we had to invoke the command, tell it to watch our files. We had to do all this work. And what's happened in Angular is a lot of this stuff has just been done for you. So if you look at the package.json file, you're gonna see that a whole bunch of testing components, testing libraries, etc., have been brought in for you automatically. So Angular has done a lot of work to set up a very sophisticated testing infrastructure for your apps, which is great because a lot of times you are on the hook for building that by yourself. Like I had to go and build it for myself when I was doing the node part of this, but it's been done for me when I'm working inside Angular. So you'll notice that a test command already exists. So if you do npm test, it's gonna run ng test which is going to invoke the test. So let's, let's, let's write some tests. So here's what I'd like to do. I wanna keep this relatively simple and I'm gonna test, write tests for one component. So the component that I'm gonna test is this green area at the top here, the bridge info panel, which takes the bridge object and it, presents a bunch of text about it and formats it in certain ways. So this is what I'd like to write. The code for this is here. So we have two things that we need to test. I'm interested in testing this bridge info panel component class. And secondarily, I'm also gonna be interested in testing this um, template to make sure that the view works the way that I want. So when we were working in Jest, what we did was we put a file beside our main file and we called it uh, .test.js. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to make a new file, bridge info panel dot component dot spec dot ts. And So the we've we've replaced test with spec, but we have we have the same basic idea. And what I'll do, just like we did when we were working in Jest, is I'll write a describe, and I'll say that this is for the bridge info panel component. So all of these tests are for this component. And just to get us started. Let's write a really simple test. Let's just, um, oops, sorry. This is, where you, this is where your brain has to make an adjustment. So in Jest, we did test, and in Jasmine, it's called it. So this is how you define a test. It should, so this is your specification. It should do this, it should do that, it should work this way, it shouldn't do this, or whatever. So let's just say it should work. And our test is going to be that we expect true to be true. How's that? Powerful, powerful statement. And I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna try running these tests. So I've got my, my app running here, but I'm gonna kill that and I'm gonna say npm test, which is, whoops, I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, let me think for a second. Have I got... NPM test is what I want. So it's going to run ng test. 
And in order for ng-test to work, it's gonna to have to compile my code and it's then going to run the test. Now, something that's different than the way that the tests were run previous is that we were running the jest tests inside of Node. But what's gonna happen here is you see that a browser has been launched and you can see that it says that Karma has run this. So if, if I put both of these windows beside each other like this, you can see that my tests over here on the left are running and you can see that one of one test has succeeded. So I have something very similar to what Jest was doing. However, the tests are also working inside of this browser. If I make this a bit bigger, you can see that my bridge info panel component describe block is here and it says that it should work. And so I'm gonna bring this over, I'll make this smaller like this and let's make it fail. So if I said, if I expect true to be false and I save this, you'll see that expected true to be false. And it tells me that this has failed and it tells me that it failed on line six, right here, you can see. So the, and if I look back here, you can see that Jasmine has reported the failure here on the console. So you get it in both places. So it's going to run these tests in the context of a live browser because our Angular app is gonna be run in a browser and not every, not every component testing approach does it this way. Some of them do it in Node and they do a simulated DOM. They use something like JS DOM um, to do it. If you look up JS DOM, JS DOM is a, it's a project that basically lets you create a, like a fake implementation of the DOM. So you don't have a browser and it's just running in memory, but it looks and feels a lot like the regular DOM. So you can do all the sorts of things that you know you would normally do with a window and the document and query selector and all that, but it's all done with JS DOM. But Jasmine and Angular are taking a different approach. They're testing in a live browser. So here we're testing in Chrome 84 on my Mac and it's running the test like this. So all of that infrastructure is set up for you. If you go sniffing around in these other files, you can see how there's a karma.conf file which figures out how to run all of this. So lots and lots of machinery has been put in place for you to do this automated testing. All you have to do is to write the tests, which is really nice. Okay, so this, this is fine, but it's not what we need. So we wanna test our uh, bridge info panel component. I wanna um, pull it in from the, the TS file here. Uh, get rid of this for now. And let's shrink this down. So I'm gonna pull in my component. Okay, so Let's try a simple test. So I would like to create an instance of my class. So the first way that I'm gonna do this is to do something like um, component is equal to new bridge info panel component. And I'm gonna expect component, um, expect it to be defined, let's say, to be defined. Now, normally we don't do this. Like we haven't been instantiating instances of our classes because Angular has been doing this for us. And in a minute, I'm gonna shift this so I don't do it this way, but I just wanna show you, um, if I save this, let's see if we can get this test to pass. So it rebuilds, over here at rebuilt and my test passes successfully, you can see that allowing a, an instance to work. If I click on that test, I can go and I can run just that you know, particular test or whichever one that I'm interested in um, in running. Okay, so let's, let's expand this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is instead of manually instantiating my component like this, Angular has a bunch of really cool stuff set up to help me simulate the environment in which my component would work. Because really what I, what I wanna do here is, 
I want to create a testing environment, which is similar to my Angular app, but it only has certain pieces of the uh, app in there. In this case, I only want to work with one single component. So I want to rip this component out of the app and run it on its own. But this component that I'm running is meant to be run inside of an Angular app. So I have to simulate an Angular app to make this work. So if you look at, like really what we want to do is we want to simulate our app.module. Like, you know, this is the main module for our whole project. And you can see it pulls in all of the different uh, components that we're going to work with. And it, you know, it defines, it defines, uh, it basically defines the app. Like this is our app, the module for our app. So the ng module gets defined here. I want to do something like that in my unit test over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a couple of pieces of the testing infrastructure from Angular. So I'm going to import testbed and component fixture from Angular core testing like that. Now, instead of doing my component here like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my component up here. So I'm going to say that I have a component and the type of this component is my bridge info panel component. So let's just, so this is uh, an instance of our component that we can use. And I need to instantiate that every time before all of my tests run. So just like we did with Jest, I'm going to set up some code that I want to run before each and every one of my tests. So I want to I want to recreate a new extension or a new component rather every time before the tests run. So in order to do this, I'm going to simulate what my main app module does when it creates the app and declares my bridge info component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say testbed dot and I'm going to configure a testing module, which is like the app module, but it's only going to be for testing. And I'm going to put in a declaration section, which is going to declare all of the components that I need. And in this case, I only care about one of them. Now we could also put other things in here like services and other modules that we need, we're need. we gonna use and dependencies that we have to deal with. But for now, I'm not gonna bother. Um, I'm not gonna bother with any of that. I'm just going to, I'm gonna use this. So this is like an isolated So our component is gonna think that it's living inside of a full app but it's gonna be living inside of this testing environment. Okay, so we set that up and then that's gonna allow me to create a fixture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this, well, let's just do it first. So I'm let a uh, fixture is going to be a component fixture and the specific type is going to be our bridge info component. So this thing here is, this is a wrapper um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grab it here. So I'm going to say the fixture, uh, is equal to this test bed. And I'm going to ask the test bed to create our component, which one, uh, the bridge info component. That's the one that I want to, I want to create. So this will create our component for us within this fixture. And then what I can do is I can reach in and I can get the components instance. So I'm gonna say um, my component is equal to the fixture environments component instance like that.
which means I no longer need to do this. So before every one of the tests, set up a clean room testing environment that looks, it looks a lot like an Angular app, but it's not an Angular app. It's this testing environment. It has a bridge info panel component in it. Make an instance of that bridge info panel component and attach it to our component reference that we have inside the describe here. So then we can use it each time. So we'll have a we'll have a new component that we can do. So let's see if this works. If this works, my component should be defined. So I save this, let it rebuild, and that passes. So one spec passing. Okay, so now we can start to think about writing other um, other tests. So let's take a look at this class and think about what to test. This class takes as input an instance of a bridge. And based on that, it has a couple of methods that are defined for generating pretty printed strings of the age, the width, and the length. So the length so when like let's take let's take length as an example length is going to get the bridge dot length and it's going to pass it to this function pretty print dimension and this thing is set up to accept a number or null and it returns a string so if we get back a value it's going to format it like this with putting meters on as the unit and if not, it's going to return the string unknown. So if I look at this code, with the length, I need at least two tests here. I need a test for the length existing and being a number. And I need a second test for the length being null. So why don't we, why don't we do that? Let's write a couple of tests for length and try and simulate those two things happening. So what I'm going to do is, again, just to organize things, I'm going to say that these are the, this is the length method. These are the tests for the length method. And I have two tests that I want to write. So the first one is, um, so it should give a string formatted with uh, length should give a string formatted length with the given bridge length like that. And the second test would be similar to this. It should give It should give unknown when bridge length is null. So I have those two tests that I want to try and write. OK, so I have a couple of problems I have to solve here. My code needs to have a bridge. So I need to set a bridge into this um, component instance. So my first problem is I need to work with bridges. So that means that inside of our code over here, I need some way to be able to work with bridges. So let's import uh, the bridge. Let's import the bridge type so that we can work with it. And Probably what we should do is we should um, have an instance of a bridge. So let's say bridge is of type bridge, like that. And before each one of these tests runs, let's uh, define a, a bridge instance. So bridge is equal to, we're going to need to say, let's go get some data. So our bridge data 
here we could grab one of these, um, say this one here. And it doesn't like all of my, it doesn't like my quotes. I don't need them. Like this, and it doesn't like my double quotes, so we'll change those like so, like that. So now we have a component and we have a bridge that we can work with in any of our tests. Okay, so what we need to do in order to write this test for the length is we need to start out by taking our bridge and let's just define the length so we know exactly what it is in this test. Now you might say, well, why don't we just use the length that's already here? We could do that too. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be explicit. I'm going to say that I want the length to be equal to 10. So in this test, I, I want to control as much as I can. I have a bridge instance and I want the length of it to be 10. So now what I want to do is I want to set my components bridge because remember my, my component needs to receive a bridge as input from its parent. So that's what we're going to have to do here. I'm going to have to pass this down. So I'm going to say the components bridge is equal to the bridge that we just defined up, up here, right? Like the bridge that's available right here. Okay, so specify a known length, set the bridge as input on the component. And then based on that, we could write our expect. So we could say, I expect bri um, I expect component dot length to equal um, the string ten meters, like that. So define a bridge length of ten. Stick the component bridge stick this bridge onto our component and then call the length call the length method and expect to get back a string that looks like this 10 meters okay let's save this see what happens okay so uh, what do we have here? This is all good. So if we change this, if this was wrong, it fails. So <clears throat> if we, if the format was wrong, this wouldn't work. So we'll correct it so that it does work. Now we could do the same, basically the same code for the null case. So in the null case, I would specify that the length is null. And if the length is null, I would expect to get the string unknown for the length. And that works. So that's length. So we can do the same thing for width. So here we're talking about the width. For a, a given bridge, width, width. Set the bridges input on the component, that's right, and then call width. 
and same thing here. Width, 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 and width. Save that. So our bridge info component can be created. We can, we know that the length works in both of the cases that we care about. We know that the width works in both of the cases that we care about. So what's left? Uh, we have to do age. Okay, so age is a little bit trickier. So let's do age. Okay, so in order to do age, well, let's do it the naive way. So let's do something fairly similar. Let's do this. So let's set the year uh, to be, say, um, let's set it to 2019. And we set the bridge input on the component. That's good. And then we're going to call age. And age, let's see what it is supposed to return. So age is supposed to return a number. And it should be the number of years between the age of the bridge and the current year. So if I set the if I set this to be, or let's say you set it to, you know, 2000. So we would expect this to equal 20, right? So it's 2020. We expect that there's a 20 year gap between this bridge's age and the current date. And save that. Cannot set property year of undefined. Um, what did I do wrong? Oh, because I'm not in a test. So, um, should calculate correct age of the bridge in years. Disconnected. Come on. Okay, and that is working like so. Now, something for you to pay attention to as well is that when you're writing tests, you never want to assume anything about the order that these tests are gonna be called because you can see here, it's not, it's not running these tests in the same order that I wrote them. So, each of these tests needs to be 100% isolated from the rest of your logic. So you can't depend upon a test to run before another test in order to set something up. You always wanna have your assumption be that this test is running completely separate from all other tests. Okay, so this test is a good example of another problem like we saw earlier where we were depending upon external external data in our bridge data set. So we were very careful about that because we were afraid that if the data underlying database changed, then our test, even though the code is still correct and the test code is correct, the data is wrong. Think about the problem that we have here. 
The problem that we have here is that I'm running this test today in 2020. But a year from now, when it's 2021, this exact same code is going to fail because the result is going to come back and be 21 instead of 20. So we have we have a problem in this test because we are depending upon external, we have an external dependency. In this case, the external dependency that we have for this test is the date, is the current date. So we have to try and work around that. So let's let's do this in a slightly different way. So let's say that um, today is equal to the current date. And let's say that the current year is equal to the dates uh, get full year. So I wanna get the number 2020 from the current date. But if I run this a year from now, I want it to be 2021 or whatever. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set, instead of hard coding a number in here, I'm gonna say that the, the, the bridge was built in the current year minus one, like that. So I don't care what the year is, but I wanna be one year less than whatever the current year is when this gets run. So then I'm going to set the uh, bridge onto the component. I'm gonna call age and I'm gonna expect that the age of this bridge is one year because this should always be true for every year. Whenever you run this code, it should always be the case that this will give me the right amount. So I'm trying to, writing test code can be tricky because things that will work today can fail later on. Or if you're doing something like making a network request, the network request could fail one day because the network goes down or the DNS changes or an SSL cert expires. So you always wanna be really careful when you're writing these tests, you're trying to say to yourself, what can I guarantee to be true forever? Like when I'm going forward, I don't wanna have this test be brittle. I don't want it to break randomly I don't want to have problems where sometimes it passes, sometimes it fails, or all of a sudden it starts failing one day and nobody can understand why, and you got to go back and rewrite the, the test. So you can write bad tests, which don't, you know, aren't really testing the thing that you that you would hope that they would test. Okay, so we have now tested the fact that we can pass in our bridge. We've tested the fact that we can call age with length, so we can use all of those pieces, but we haven't done anything to test out this template yet. So I have a couple of things I'd like to be able to test. So let's say you're building, um, you know, your designer gives you a component that looks like this, and even before you build it, you could write these tests and you could say, I expect that the title is gonna be in title case. So you can see that we're piping it through title case here. So whatever the name is, it should look like this. It should be title case. And then I expect to have the year formatted this way, the width formatted this way, and the length formatted this way. So what I'm gonna to do to make this a little bit easier for myself is I'm gonna throw a couple of uh, extra bits of information on here so it's easier to query for them. So I'm gonna say that this uh, this piece here is equal to, I'll just give it a name so that I can say, you know, this is equal to, let's say the year. This div here is equal to the width and this one here is equal to the length. So I have, I have an H2 element that I care about, and I have three divs that I care about, and I need to write tests for all of these. All right, so let's let's do some of that. So I wanna, I need now to be able to work with my components HTML element. So when my element gets rendered in the DOM, this thing here, if we, let me see if I can show you. So if I select this thing here, this bridge info panel, <clears throat> the, the div that hosts it, this thing here, inside it contains an H2 and it contains these, you know, these, these divs that are being laid out. So what I need is I need access to this, I need access to this host element, this HTML element, so that I can work with 
what's in the template when it gets rendered. So in my testing code, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write another uh, property. I'm gonna say let el is of type HTML element. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work with the element that is the host for this thing. So this is the uh, the views um, HTML element, and I need to get that. So grab So when we create the component instance inside of our before each, I want to specify that the element is equal to our fixture. I want to grab the native element from it. So just to remind you, we're setting up this sort of fake Angular app that only has one component in it. Then we're creating this fixture, which is like a, it's this wrapper around my class and the view, and it allows me to programmatically debug it and work with it. So the fixture allows me to get the instance of the component, and it also allows me to get this uh, HTML element, which is uh, where the component is hosted. So now I can write tests against this element here uh, below. So let's do that. So let's write some tests for the way that the template looks. So I'm gonna, essentially, I'm just gonna make sure that certain things are true, okay? Um, so let's do the first one. Let's make sure that this H2 has the name of the bridge, okay? so. I want to make sure that our bridge has um, been, the name has been turned into title case and it's been rendered into our H2. So if you think about how you would write a test for this, this H2 element right here, um, let's just copy a selector for this so that I can work with it. So if I said um, so there's the h2 right there. If I reached inside of that h2 and I wanted to get the like let's say I wanted to get the text content for that element I have that string right there. So really what I want to do is in my automated test, I want the component to get rendered, the template to get rendered based on this bridge. And then I want to reach into the DOM. I want to find that H2 element. I want to get the text out of it and I want to make sure it matches what I'm expecting. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to take my bridge instance. I'm going to set its name to something ridiculous. I'm going to say uh, B R I D G E uh, N A M E like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a string that has upper and lowercase letters so that I can make sure that it gets turned into the, the format that I'm expecting. I'm going to put the bridge onto my component. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my element and I'm gonna query selector inside of the element um, for the H2 like this. And I'll just put this in a variable. So I'll say const H2 is equal to this. So it's gonna reach in, grab the H2, and I'm gonna expect that the H2 text content is going to equal bridge name. So this is what I'm putting into my bridge object, and I'm gonna expect that it gets turned into an H2 that has this text in it. So save this and let's see what happens. 
Okay, so this fails. So it says on line 101, so right here, it expected bridge name to equal bridge name, but it actually got the empty string right here like that. Okay, so the reason that this is happening is that I am sticking the bridge onto my component, but the life cycle of the Angular component is such that it has to it has to wait for those changes in the properties to be seen, and then it has to re-render the component. So what I have to do here is my code is basically running too fast. Like if I waited, if I could just wait a little bit longer before I did that, it would work. So instead of, I guess I wouldn't wait there, I would wait here. So I need, I need a way to wait until the component has finished updating itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fixture and I'm gonna tell it that I want it to, whoops. I want it to detect changes before going onward. So essentially I want it to block so that this H2 can be rendered with the data that I just put up here. So we're gonna wait for our input, our bridge input to get updated in the view. So this fixture that we created up here, right here, is allowing us to do these simulated things like interact with our component in ways that you normally wouldn't in a browser, but we can do it really easily here in our testing code. So it gives us this environment where we can make changes to the world, the environment where things are. So I'm gonna try that, I'll, I'll save this and rerun it. Okay, now it passes because the data that we put in here has made its way down into the element down here, like so. And if I, if I change this to lowercase b, it should fail. It does fail because we have a lowercase b, but it should be an upper, it's getting an uppercase b. So that's good. So it's working exactly the way that we would, um, the way that we would expect. Okay, let's do let's do the year. Okay, so let's do um, it should include the bridge year and age info. So we need to do the same sort of trick that we did above where we're setting the, the year to be um, one less than the current year. But because we're gonna have to do that code again, maybe it's a sign that we should refactor this and up here, when we set up our bridge, when we set the year, we should just do this. We should say um, today equals this get the current year equals whatever the full year is. And then we're gonna set the year here to be current year minus one like that. So, and use one year ago. Um, what's nice about this is that it should mean that down here, um, I don't need to do any of this. So that should, now this is where tests are great because I just made a bunch of changes to my code. Did I get it right? Well, if my tests pass, continue to pass, they used to pass. So if you make changes, you can say, well, this should still pass even though I've made changes to it. So I'm gonna, um, let's just save this and see what it does do. Yeah, so we're, we're still good. So we should include the bridge year and age info. Okay, so let's try and write this. So we're gonna say 
the component.bridge is equal to our bridge. And um, we need to, because we're setting the input property, we need to wait for those changes to happen. And then we should be able to reach inside. So let's get the let's get this div that we want to test and say element.query selector. And we're going to look for the year class inside of um, our host element. And we are going to expect that the divs text content is going to equal the following string. And I guess I'll do it as a template literal. So it's gonna have the year followed by whatever the year should be, followed by parenthesis, followed by, and inside the parenthesis is going to be whatever the age is in years. So if we, let me just save this. You can see here that our year should look like this. In fact, I'm gonna copy and paste this so that we can see it in our tests. So this is what we're doing here, like that. Okay, we'll come back to those. Actually, let me move these down below. So we'll do those down here. Okay, so we are we expect to get something in this form right here. So the year should be whatever the bridge dot year is, and the age should be uh, just, the, just the number one. So I guess we could just put one in here, like so. That's what I would expect this thing to look like. Uh, so if we save this, Very good. Okay. So let's let's write the test for these other two. So we need to do um, width and length. And once again, um, describe. Um, Let's do width first. Okay, so for width, we have two cases, the case of giving it a number and the case of giving it nothing. So we wanna do, um, it's very similar to this. So let's do this. So should include the width when um, properly formatted as a number. And it needs to look like this. Okay, so before I do this with the bridge, I'm going to set the width equal to, let's say, 10. Put the bridge on the component, wait for the changes, and then I want to grab the width div. I want to check that the text content of the width div looks like width colon 10 meters, like that. And if if we do this with it should um, it should include the width prop 
the width um So when it's missing, it should be the string unknown. So instead of 10, I'm going to pass in null, put it on the component, wait for the changes, grab the width, and then expect this to equal the string unknown, like that. Whoops. Perfect. So the template width is working. So now we've done age, we just need to do length. And length is identical to uh, width. So we could either copy and paste this, or you could also, I don't know if you would, um, like the only difference between these two is that one is width and one is length. So you can also, like I could also do something like this. Um, so in here, actually let's do width and length like this. Okay, so this is going to be, so I'm gonna say, um, so this would be, um, So basically, I'm just going to write some code to write this test two different ways. So should include the um, properly formatted as a number. And everywhere in here that I, so this will be bridge at um, equals 10. This here would be uh, dot name lower. Expect this to be equal to name ten meters. When missing, So I don't know, like, is this better or not? Um, so uh, similar tests for width and length. So they're basically the same except for these few changes. So is that better or worse? I don't know. Let's see if it works first of all before we pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, so inside the template, I have length and width. They're both, you know, both of them are working here. But I only had to write the code one time. So when you're writing tests, you'll see lots of people do things like this where they'll, if there's things that repeat or things that are really common, like if you look at this code, look at these two tests. If you wanted to, you could simplify those two. But I would also say that you don't want to become overly clever. So 
it's you know you're not trying to win a competition for how short your code can be you're trying to make this code as readable as possible as maintainable as possible and the downside to what i've done here too is that if either of these if our template ever changes significantly and these things aren't the same then i'm going to have to rip all that code apart so it might make it harder to maintain down the road um, you know, having having repetition isn't isn't terrible, but whatever you, you can make it make a choice. But I want you to notice again the same kind of pattern that we had last time, which is our component is let's see, thirty like about thirty lines of code. If I got rid of the spaces, so let's say thirty lines of code, and our test is 140 lines of code. It's actually like quite a bit more if I were to expand out, you know, here's another 20 lines of code. So 160 lines of code for testing for that component. So th your tests are often gonna be a lot larger than the code that implements it. Not always, but a lot of times you're gonna have, you know, in order to write really good tests, you're gonna have to think about all the different code paths that you have to go down, all the different cases that you care about testing all of the things that are working on. You might say to yourself, um, you might say, is it even worth doing this? Like, isn't this ridiculous? Like if I were saying to you for, for an assignment, if I said, you need to write the code for the assignment and the assignment code is gonna be, you know, 500 lines of code and the tests are gonna be, you know, five to 10 times that amount, you might say to me, that's ridiculous. Like I. I, why would I write tests for all this? And I would say to you that when you're writing a prototype or an MVP or you're writing a demo, you don't need tests. Tests are what you write when you want to ship a piece of code to production and you need that code to continue working for months and years down the road. It's what you do when you have lots of people that are working on a project. And see, the nice thing about these tests is if somebody ever goes in and breaks this code, so let me show you what I mean. So let's say somebody goes in here and accidentally uh, removes this. And they, you know, we run the tests. You'll see that we have multiple tests that have now failed because somebody broke the specification for our project. So you can't, you can't just go in and change things. Or if somebody comes along and accidentally removes this. I'm gonna have a test that fails. I have a contract. So my code, in order to be acceptable, in order for us to ship it, we agree that these tests all have to pass. Now this is one component. Imagine a big system, you're gonna have lots of components and people are gonna write all kinds of different tests. So if you have a big team, you got 10, 15, 50, 100 people working on a, a big piece of code, you're gonna to have tons and tons and tons of tests. The project is gonna get huge. Nobody is gonna understand the whole project. Like that sounds ridiculous, but I've worked on lots of source code where you know, you have millions of lines of code. Nobody at the company understands all of it. Like there's nobody who understands every single piece of how the program works. Instead, what you do is you have people write tests and then the tests sort of stand guard over the code to make sure that that code doesn't change in such a way that it breaks how things work. So we've been able to take these kinds of assertions and we've tested our REST API, we've tested our database. Now we're going into the front end and we're testing our components. We're using some of the pieces of Angular to make it really easy to simulate a single component or a couple of components working together. Sometimes your tests might require you to have two or three components work together and we're simulating passing data in, we're simulating rendering things, making sure that it renders the way we want. And we could keep building this up. So we only, you know, we're just gonna touch on testing today. There's a lot more we could do. We could, we could even start working on, instead of doing these unit tests, we could do end-to-end -end tests where we're testing if a user like clicks on a button that it goes, the data goes all the way back through our system in ways that we expect and the right kinds of responses are happening. But this, this gives you an idea of what's involved in uh, trying to come up with tests that 
help to guarantee that your program continues to function as the code changes, as the dependencies change, and as the people on the team change. Super, super important. And I would just say to you that if you're interested in this as a topic, this is a career. Like you can go and and really focus on build, deploy, automated testing, CI, all of these kinds of things. Like th lots of people, this is their whole focus. So it, it's it's worth paying attention to this because you're gonna if you know how to do it well, you're gonna be head and shoulders above a lot of other people who are trying to get the same jobs you're looking for. Anyway, I'll pause it there and I'll put this code up in the test branch on GitHub.